Hi, welcome to another tutorial in my series on permutations and combinations. And in this tutorial what we're going to continue with is restrictions. But we're looking at restrictions where we've got items in a line and we're looking at no particular two items must be together. And I'm going to do two examples for you. All right? The last one you might even want to try yourself based on this one. Now what we've got here is in how many ways can five men and three women be arranged in a row if no two women are standing next to one another? And to do something like this, what I would suggest you do is put down some spaces and what we're going to do is fill those spaces with the five men first of all. Then we're going to look at the three women. Now the five men, what you do is you put them down in such a way that you leave a space between each one of them. So we'll put the first male down in this space here and we'll call it M1. Then we'll put M2, M3 and so on, okay, until we have put down however many items that are in the question. So we've got our five men here leaving a space in between each one of them. Now, how many ways can those men rearrange themselves amongst themselves? Okay, that's the first thing. Well, we've already seen in the past that if that were the case, then n items can be rearranged amongst themselves as long as they're different n factorial ways. So in this case, it's going to be 5 factorial ways 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now if we look at the women, okay, let's just put them down here, W1, W2, W3 for the three women. Now for any time that we have an arrangement of the men, any of these five factorial ways, a woman has a choice of one, two, three, four, five, six, six places to stand, okay? That's the first woman. So there's going to be six ways for a woman to stand somewhere in one of those spaces. But as soon as that woman is in one of those places, the second woman has a choice of just five more spaces. So there's going to be five times there. And for any of these five places, the final woman okay has only got a choice of four spaces so it needs times by four so if you were to work this out what you would find is that you get 14,400 different arrangements of how these people can stand okay now I did say that uh, this tutorial consists of two examples and the second example is a bit harder than the one that we've just been doing. Now what we have here is in how many ways can the letters in the word success be arranged if no two S's are next to one another. Now you might like to pause the video if you want to give this a go and come back when ready and I will work through the solution for you. Okay, and you might like to just check to see whether you're able to do it. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. Now for this one, what I would do is first of all put down the letters U, E, C and C, the ones that aren't the S's. So let's just put those down here. We've got a U, an E, and two C's. And I'm going to call those C's C1 and C2 because there's repetition here. And when it comes to the S's, there's three S's. I'm going to call them S1, S2 and S3. So we need to think about these letters here in blue. We've got four letters and if we were to leave spaces in between them I would need to have nine dashes. So I'd put nine dashes down here. Let's just say go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
and then I would want to insert these letters. So put a U here, say, E here, leaving a space between each one, C1 and C2. So when it comes to the number of arrangements of the letters that you see, the blue letters, okay, we'll just write that in first, arrangements, equals, we've got four different letters if we treat the C's as being different, and we know that they can be rearranged amongst themselves four factorial ways. But we've got to be very careful here because we've got repetition of the C's. So for any one of these four factorial arrangements, the C's, as we discussed earlier when you've got repetition, can be rearranged amongst themselves two factorial ways. And we're not going to notice any difference because they won't have subscripts. Okay, So we need to divide this by two factorial. OK, well that's the number of ways that we can arrange the blue letters. Now, when it comes to the S's, we've got to times this by however many ways that we can insert these S's into the spaces. Well, for the first S, we've got a choice of one, two, three, four, five spaces. So it's got to be times by five. But for any one of the ways that we place the first S, there's going to only be four spaces left to place the second S. So that's going to be times four. And finally, for the third S, it's only got a choice of three possible places. But also with this, we've got to be very careful because the S's are different. They're different at the moment because they've got subscripts on. But if you take those subscripts away, any of these arrangements can be rearranged amongst themselves three factorial ways because of the repetition of the S. So we've got to divide this by three factorial. So a bit trickier than the uh, first question purely because we've got the repetition. Anyway, if you work that out, hopefully you'll get 120. Okay, well, that brings us now to the end of this particular tutorial. And uh, as usual, hope that it was of some help to you. And uh, again, thanks for listening.